everyone, it's Mike here. So it's time for day two of my seven days of Halloween series for 2020. So in today's project, there are lots of different individual steps. So this video is a little bit long, but if you stick with it, it'll be worth it in the end. So let me turn over to my overhead camera and show you what I'm gonna create. So as I said in the introduction, there are lots of different stages and steps when creating a little mini journal. Uh, or notebook like this one. So the first stage is to actually create your covers or your carcass for it. Um, I've already got the material that I'm going to use for the book's cover, which is um, Bookram. So it's a nylon cloth, which has got a paper backing, specifically for covering books. Um, and this is obviously in jet black, because it wouldn't be a Halloween book without the black, would it? I suppose you could use purple if you wanted to. So the base, is created using 3000 micron thick grey grunge board. So this board is specifically manufactured for um, for making covers or for the use in covers. And it's a lot thicker than the cover that you would, or the grey grunge board that you would normally get on the back of a pad. Now if I just show you in comparison the thickness of those two, to get auto focus out of the way, so you can see that the one in my left hand here is actually a lot thicker, almost twice as thick as the one that they use on the back of a pad, such as this one. That's not to say you can't use it, but I prefer the thicker um, grey grunge board when I'm making a carcass for a book or a journal. So as you can see, the size is going to be a small one. It's not going to be the typical, um, what I call A5 size one. It's actually half that as A6. Um, which is a quarter size of an A4. So if you're using American measurements and American cardstock or whatever, you'd just use a quarter of whatever it is for your eight and a half by 11. But it wants to be bigger than the actual page itself that you're gonna be putting in there. Now let me just see if I've got... Okay, so this is a piece of A6 cardstock. As you can see, it's just slightly bigger all the way around because you're carcass for your book needs to be slightly bigger all the way around. It can be as big as you want. It can be two or three mils, an eighth of an inch, whatever, um, bigger all the way around. It's up to you how much you, you know, extra you want to put on there. Um, but for me, this one is bang on 11 millimeters, 11 millimeters, 11 centimeters by, and I've got it at 153 or 152, which is bang on about six inches. Let's just see whether I'm right on that. Yeah, up six inches by about four and a quarter, or just over four and a quarter, maybe five sixteenths. It doesn't really make any difference as long as it's bigger. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut it two pieces the same size, and I've determined that my spine needs to be about 25 millimeters or about an inch. And then all I've done is I've taken the two pieces and joined them together, all the pieces for the spine and the covers, I've joined them together just using masking tape. And I've done it on both sides and I've done it in a way that you can fold it either way. Flat. And that just means that when the covers are on, they will lay flat as well. So the reason I've used masking tape is because it's light and it's easy to use. Um, people say that it's not archive quality. Well, I doubt the journal's gonna last that long. But um, once you've actually got the covers on, once you've got the cloth on and everything on the inside, that's gonna strengthen it. That's gonna prevent it from tearing. So you don't really need to go and use duct tape or Gorilla tape or something like that. You really don't need to. It's a bit like overkill, or I think it's a bit like overkill anyway. So I've covered the back of my black cloth. I'll just show you. I've cut the black cloth so there's approximately, what, it's not quite an inch all the way around, probably about a half inch all the way around, just to give me clearance, just to make sure that there's enough cloth to wrap over. And I've covered it on the back with double-sided um, adhesive sheeting. Now, you can use PVA glue. There's absolutely no problem with using PVA glue if that's all you've got, or 
Aileen's Tacky Clear Glue or Fabric Glue or whatever. It's entirely up to you which one you want to use. Okay, so this is going to be my inside and I'm going to just lay it down so there's that equal kind of border all the way around. It doesn't matter if you just get it slightly off. And I'm just going to push that down and then just using the bone folder, the back, not the, the sharp edge. And I'm just going to rub that along that piece there. Just so that I know that it's going to go in. Okay, so the next step, get rid of that mat, because I want to start cutting it. So I'll grab a sharp scalpel and I've got my little trusty metal ruler and I'm going to just cut it across the corner leaving just a little bit on the edge so you can see there's a gap from there to there I'm not going right close up to it I want to leave a little bit of a gap and then cut that and then do the same at this side said if you don't manage to get it exact don't worry about it there's plenty of chances later to be able to cover up any mistakes like so and then do the final one pretty much about there just trim that off and of course because you've got the adhesive it's going to stick to the back of your ruler and you can just peel it off. There we go. Ooh. Okay, so now we've got that on, we can start to just roll those edges up. So just lift it with your finger or your thumb push it up on the edge and then just slowly smooth it from the edge into the book. Okay and then where you've got the little bit of extra on that side you can then fold it over now, I've missed it a little bit at that side there, that's okay. Like I said, there'll be plenty of opportunities to cover up later on. A little bit too close. I think I might have actually gone a little bit too close on all of them. But we'll see. Tucking that edge in there, that edge in there, and then roll it up with my fingers. Like so. And then just ease it in with your bone folder or with a ruler. journal ready to play with. Okay so I've made sure that the cover has been burnished around the edges. Now where those little gaps were I've just used in my case a distress marker, the black soot distress marker and just with that brush end I've just literally gone in and just coloured just that little bit of the grey board where you could see a little bit showing through. Like I said, most of it's going to be disguised and covered up anyway, so there's only going to be like a fraction if you haven't managed to catch it. Now, the other part of doing the journals, obviously, is covering the insides of 
the book so that when you open it up you've got something nice to look at on the inside. Um, one of the steps that you have to do before creating your journal, if you're doing one specific, is design your inside covers and print them out. So these are mine and I've done them so that they're mirror images of each other. So this central spine is going to be where we're going to stitch in all the signatures so that will be hidden so that you won't see the join. But I've done it so that it's kind of a mirror image and because it's a Halloween journal then obviously it has to be spider's webs. So again I've covered the back with double sided sheets but you can use glue no problem at all and I'm going to lay that down and I'm not going to push down hard and I'm just going to lay it just like that I'm not even going to push it down I'm going to take the second side and then I'm going to place that one down too See, I nearly caught it and I want to make sure that I get the top and the bottom at the right sort of height to each other. That's about right. And then I can push down. But I've not pushed down too hard because we do need to create that crease. Now you see how they started to push up. So all I'm going to do is just lift slightly. It's easier with glue. <laughs> and then lift that one and then just rub the crease into it. And then do the same thing again at that side and as you push the tops will push over the top of each other with any look as if they're not grabbing there you go and then you can just use your finger just to push down and then get your bone folder and then you can just very gently ease the paper, just rub it, push the fibres into that crease so that you can fold and open it without any problems. Sometimes you just need to persuade it a little bit. There we go. Just gently, a bit of gentle persuasion. inside front covers done of the journal. Okay so now that we've got our covers done I want to decorate the outside corners and to do that I'm going to add in some um, some alloy book corner protectors. Now for this I'm just going to use a little bit of glossy accents and I'm only going to put it along the edge and just inside because when you push the book corners on and then turn it over to clamp them, the glue is going to spread. So all you do is just push down and you can use a bone folder for this just to get that grip. Squeeze down and you've got that fantastic corner that's going to protect your book for ages. And I'm just going to repeat the same process with each corner. So put a little bit of glue down the edge and a little bit on the face just so it will hold. Slide it on. Turn it over and then push down. And then just use the bone folder just to smooth it. So you can see any of those gaps that you may have had in that corner have now completely and utterly disappeared. So I'll just finish off and do the other two and then I'll be back. Okay there we have it. Our book, whichever way up you want to take it. <laughs> So there's the covers, all we have to do now is just put them to one side while we work on the interior 
are the actual signatures themselves. Okay, so the next stage in building the journal is obviously designing the signatures that you want to go in it. So I sat down at my computer and I worked out a template for a double page spread on one side and then obviously I did one double sided so that I get two signature sets out of one sheet. Now by that, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So out of one sheet, I will get two signatures double-sided so all I do is just trim it down the middle and then fold it in half but before I trim it down the middle and fold it in half it has to be tea dyed to make it look old now a couple of months ago or beginning of August um, Ian kindly stood for an hour or two and as you can see um, tea dyed all of the papers for me and um, so he tea dyed them put them in the oven dried them all and then handed them all back en masse. So, <laughs> so that's pretty much how they got back to me. So then all I did was just cut them up, trim them out and then fold them into signature sets. So here are the three signature sets that I've got. Not quite complete so I want to add these pieces to them um, and as you can see there's quite a few and they're kind of nice dinky kind of size to work on. So all I need is my paper trimmer. I've already got those two already done. So what I've also done just on the one sheet is I've created a title page. So this will go on the first page um, at the very very front of the book. So all I'm going to do is just grab my trimmer, do two pages at once because you know there's no point beating about the bush. And then I can just trim them all out. And then I can just fold them in half. Like so. And because they're already tea dyed, there's no need for distressing. Because the tea dyeing, or in our case, it was actually a mixture of water and Tim Holtz um, vintage photo with a little bit of tea dye, distress ink or the reinkers mixed in with water and then just painted on. So no tea bags were harmed <laughs> in the making of this journal. So there are the last few remaining signatures or leaves to go into the signatures. So one, two, three, let's just mix and match the colours. One, two, three, that goes in the first one. So that can go on that one. So that's going to be the very first signature in the book. And then there's one more set there. I'm just mixing those up. It doesn't really make any difference which way around we go. Take that signature set and they can just go in the middle. And find the middle signature which is there. And that one is already complete. So in each of the signatures there are 20. So you're talking 20 sheets and there's four per set. So yeah there's a lot of pages in this journal and they're all going to fit in in that one inch spine. So it's going to be absolutely cram packed full. So the next thing that I have to do with these three set, signature sets is get them ready for stitching. So what I've done is I've already got my pricking template. So I've measured one inch from this piece of paper is obviously exactly the same size. So what I've done is I've measured one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom and then half. And that's where I'm going to prick and they're going to be my sewing holes for these journals. So what I need is my pricking mat, ta-da, and I need an awl or a pokey tool, ta-da, and I need all my signatures. Now you can do this in two lots if you're not comfortable doing it all in one. So for example if you think it's going to be too many 
just literally just take one out put your pricking template in the middle so your holes are there in the middle now I cradle like so so that they're in a V make sure the bottom lines up make sure the top lines up and you're as close into the bottom as you can get and then I just place my pokey tool and just go all the way through now if I just turn that over you see the holes are already there on the edge ready for stitching so now you've got your holes in that one you can just transfer that back over to the other half or if you're only putting in 10 sheets then you're all done just move on to your next signature and just keep on doing that till you've gone through all of your signature sets and the T signifies the top so you make sure you always got that in the right position at the same point there you go and then theoretically when you slide this slot inside I can find the middle again there we go that inside there they all should theoretically line up there you go straight through all in the same place so that's signature one done I'll just do the same to this signature and then I'll carry on and do it to the other one as well but there's no point in you watching me do all three just a repetitive process I'm going to do exactly the same thing so I'll just do this one quickly there we go straight through and then I'll just jump to the end okay so that is all three of the signatures already pricked and ready to be stitched into um, into the book so I'll now bring in the next stage okay so the next stage is um, working out how we're going to stitch the signatures into the book now rather than stitching directly through the spine so that all the stitching is visible on the spine of the book which I don't particularly like I like to encompass mine in what I call a tray so you've got like a, a mini book made out of card and the signatures are stitched into this then glued into the actual carcass of the the covers the actual hard case of the covers now because this is made of card and you're going to be opening the book all the time I have reinforced the outside with black duct tape or gorilla tape and I've just folded it and made sure that it's all stuck down that's the outside doesn't matter about the decoration um, I've actually added on my pricking guide as to where the signatures are going to get stitched into which should match the pricking guide that I've got on the piece of paper which it does because I've already checked it Whew. so on the inside I'm going to stick a piece of buckram book cloth and I've already added some double-sided tape to and that's going to get stuck down on the center section of the tray and the reason that I've grunged it up with some distressing is because I don't particularly like the fact that you can see the white just in the corners on those creases this is going to get covered up you'll see why in a second or with what in a second so I'm just going to take the back off that double sided and I'm going to very very carefully lay this into the middle lining up with the top and I'm using the sides raised just as a guide to make sure that I'm getting it in the center and then just lay it down just like that there we go so that's now stuck down nice so we've got the reinforcing on that side and at this point we can bring that pricking mat back in again and using the holes just there, I don't know if you can see those those little dots are my pricking guide 
for the actual signatures in the tray. So all I'm going to do is just place my pokey tool onto those dots, just make it easy for yourself because you know why make life hard? You don't have to measure, you don't have to bother with rulers and pencils and of course it's all going to be hidden. Now when I turn that over you've got those nine holes just ready for stitching. No need for measuring at that stage. Okay so I want to cover that up so I've got two pieces of the same decorated um, cardstock that I used for the inside front covers and again they're going to get stuck down on there. Now this is the reason why I didn't want that white showing because it's just going to stand out like a sore thumb. And then we've got this side there. Once they're stuck down you're still going to be able to see that, the black tape. So I've done another two sets and they're going to go on that side and that side there or that side there. And then when that gets glued into the book you won't see it because the rest of that black tape will be where it gets glued down onto. So pretty straightforward. So again I've just put some double sided tape but obviously you can use glue, no problem. What I'm going to do is just fold that over and then get it as near as I can without it jumping at me. It's extremely strong glue or very strong double sided and then I'll just feed that down all the way and it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit too big or you don't get it in exactly the right place because you can always trim it afterwards stick down first trim later make it look as though it's supposed to fit So again, start in the corner, lay it down, and then theoretically that should, he says, theoretically, fit. There we go. So like I said, once that's glued down, you're not going to see it. And then all you have to do then is just do your inside ones, your inside panels. And I've done it so that they should theoretically line up. Yeah, pretty much. Again, using wet glue if you prefer, if that's your preferred medium. far enough in that corner, that's it. So that's going to be the inside where the signatures will sit and that's the outside and you won't see that black because that's going to be glued down into the inside of the book. So all we have to do now is just to finesse it a little bit along the edges to make sure that those white raw edges are completely clear or completely gone so we can use we can trim that and then use distressing which is what I'll do and once I've done that I'll be back and we're ready to start doing the stitching. Okay so I've got my sewing materials ready I've got my waxed linen thread now this is the 25 stroke 3 medium weight wax linen thread for book binding. I've got all my needles, um, I've got everything that I'm going to need. I've already pre-threaded one of my um, book binding needles with the thread. So I like to do my 
stitching of the signatures in reverse order. So I always stitch in the last signature first and work my way to the front. And I also like to start, I'll have to try and do this um, in short. I like working from the outside in. I don't put the knots on the inside, I like the knots on the outside, if that makes sense. You'll see. So I'm going to use a three hole pamphlet stitch, just a bog standard three hole pamphlet stitch. It's only um, a small journal so it doesn't need to be huge. So just make sure I've got enough thread back there. Try and keep your um, holes kind of aligned on your signature sheet because it makes it easier to stitch. And then you can just go straight through the needle, pull to the outside, and then back to the top and then hopefully your signatures will all be aligned of course mine there we go push through and then pull to the outside and then oh it's just come out sometimes happens but it's not difficult to thread these ones the eyes are huge on these needles so as long as you keep hold of the thread that you've got on the back there shouldn't be an issue with finding where you need to where you need to go there we go and then straight back out again to the outside okay now People do this differently and there's a thousand and one different ways in which you can do it. I like to pull to the side just to get a bit of tension and then I lift with the needle and pull one of the threads either side of your mane. And then I get my knot and then as I'm pulling the knot down I'm pulling and creating the tension on the thread. And that is what holds it tight and then just snip that off. And there's your first signature in your book. Sturdy as well, very sturdy. On to the second signature. So into the middle I've got a spare needle so just to make sure the holes are aligned I'm just going to pop it through so that the needle comes through straight away so I know pretty much all lined up lay that flat get my twine now for me I like twice the height of the page and you just got a little bit extra that should be more than enough than what you actually need to stitch in and then even though it's wax linen thread I just like to give it a little bit of extra that's beeswax and then like I said Start from the middle, get your second set of signatures, find your middle, just use that second needle, that spare needle, just to make sure you're lined up, and then your signatures can go straight through, and your needle comes straight out the other end. Look. And again, you can hold on to the thread with your thumb at the back, pull to the outer, make sure I've actually got them the right way up, and then we can go straight back through into that hole we've already made, pull to the outer, and then back again. And then theoretically, your holes in your signatures at this side should all be aligned. There you go. So I come straight through, pull to the outer again, and then 
back through the same hole you came out of to start off with, back to the outside. And then as before, get your needle under and then just pull across so you've got one at either side, pull, tie your knot and then as you're pulling your knot tight, take the tension down onto the pages, pull down and then create the tension on the string that helps to hold everything firm so you've not got any loose stitching. So push down the pages, pull with the string and there you go. Snip. And then there's signature number two. And of course this will lay flat as well because you've got that gap in between. And then the final signature, so you've seen me do it twice, so I shall just go ahead and speed through on fast forward. All in place, got my thread, and then I'll join with you back at the end. Okay, so that's the spine and the book all nicely stitched in. So um, I worked out, was it 240 pages to play with? That's 240 sides to play with. So a nice kind of chunky mini journal to write in. Now, remember the cover. So I had a little bit of an issue with the inside where it, it kind of came up. So I had to redo the inside, I had to recover the inside again. Um, but that's fine because when this goes in that's going to cover the inside bit there and you're not going to see it so that's just perfect so to decorate a little bit more I've got some black seam binding ribbon and I'm going to glue a piece of that down the spine there so that when it dries that will become a placeholder ribbon so I'm just going to put a bead of glossy accents just down past halfway and then get the ribbon and then just lay it down over the top into the center and then I'm just going to hold it in place and then just gently push down with my finger so that that glossy accents seeks through that ribbon and then we'll stay in place. You can see how wet it is there now. The next thing, I've got some header tapes. So header tapes are normally um, what you'd see in a book at the top and the bottom, so header and footer tapes. Now these normally get stitched onto your text block when you're doing, um, when you're binding, I'll say properly, but when you're doing it the long way. Um, you can still get the same effect just by adding some header tape at this stage here. So all I'm going to do is just add a small bit, again using the glossy accents, just to add some onto the tape and then just position that right at the very, very top so it lines up with the top of the book, of that spine. A little bit of time to play with it and then I'm going to do the same thing again at the bottom here and then I'm going to leave them to dry. It says dropping it straight away. Oh look, I'm having one of those days today, dropsy. I'll wipe that up in a second. Okay, so place that in the middle. 
so it lines up with the bottom of the spine. Okay, and then just quickly just wipe that off. There we go. And then leave that for about half an hour or so to set and dry before we then attempt to glue in the tray. At this stage, if you wanted to, you could add um, some pockets on either side, which I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to go and print those off now, and then I'll be back ready to, to stick those on to create some internal hidden pockets on the front. That's what I'll do while that's drying. Okay, so the headers and footers and the integral placeholder ribbon is now dry and done. And I was talking about the invisible pockets. So this is one of the invisible pockets. So it's just some of the, the spider web paper folded over, punched, um, and then I've added some red liner construction tape on the back. So I say it's an invisible pocket because when it goes on, it kind of disappears. Like that one. Yeah, but you didn't notice that was there, did you? So what I've also done is I've created some tarot card journaling cards. So they've got the tarot card on the front, the spider's web pattern on the back, but on the inside, I hope the camera's picking that up, it's not too light or not too dark. There's a lined paper, grungy lined paper, in which to take notes or to write things on. And there's just enough space in each of the pockets for two cards. So, and I've made them a decent size so you can write on. So you've got the sun, the moon, the star, and the world. Da, da, da. So I've not put any of the... Um, of the darker cards in there. Just put the ones that are nice. The sun, the moon, the star and the world. So I'll just take the back off this construction tape. Which is easy enough to do. And then just put my finger in the corner and then line that up with the bottom like that, and then that should theoretically fall just in place for that pocket. And like I said, it then disappears into the background. And then that's just right. For it's a little bit tight, obviously, just to start off with. To put a couple of those little journaling cards in, or you can put in whatever you want. So now I'm ready to stick and glue in the signatures. And then when that's done, we'll just be ready to decorate the cover. Okay, so ready to stick the spine in. So what I've done is I've added on some um, very strong double-sided tape on the spine. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some glossy accents on there as well, because this will seek through or go through the tape. And that will bind and bond that signature block in. There we go. So I just want to make sure I've got it the right way up. Yep. And that will enable me to be able to position this in the middle. I'll have to get my head in shot a little bit just to make sure I've got it centered perfectly. And then push down, lift up those. And then just with the bone folder, I'm just going to go in between the signatures and just push down. So that the glue grabs and the tape will hold it in place. And 
then just on that last bit at the end. Like so. And then what we can do, make sure that that's holding, is allow the weight of the actual journaling block itself just to push down. And we'll leave that for an hour or two. So I'll put something heavy around it, or something heavy on it, that will hold it in place. There, that should do it. And we'll give that an hour or so to dry. Okay, while that's dry, while the signature block is drying into the, the main cover, I'm going to decorate, or get ready to decorate the front. So, I have the spider's web MDF laser cut from my Halloween, I think it's Halloween set number one. Um, you get this with a couple of skulls and uh, the bats. But what I've done is I've just cut just two of the end spikes off and two at this side so that it will fit within the front cover of the journal. Now I didn't need anything difficult with it, I just used a craft knife, a scalpel, and it just literally came off. And then just to finish it off or finesse it, I just used an emery board just to sand it to make sure that it was nice and smooth and there was no jagged edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a coat of paint, metallic paint to match the corners. Um, indigo blue goldfinger metallic paint, no label on this one because it was a new batch and it was a bit darker. So this will go quite nicely in with that kind of antique bronzy brass colour. And I've got a, um, a sponge dauber, a clean sponge dauber, so I'm just going to pick the paint up just inside the lid, let the paint absorb into the sponge and then I'm going to spounce over the top. That's pretty much all of the process that you need. Now because I'm using a metallic, obviously the light's shining on it, but also because it's a very similar colour to the work mat and it's also a similar colour to the MDF, you can't really see it very well. <laughs> now if I'd have done this in white, you'd have definitely seen it. It would have stood out quite well. Okay, so that's probably the first coat. Just to add a little bit more on. As with most paints, in situations like this, if you add a second load to it before the first load's dry, you just end up taking the first load back off again. So it's always best just to actually let it dry for a few minutes. You can encourage it with the heat gun if you want to. You can see how shiny that is now. Um, you can encourage it with the heat gun if you want in between coats, but what I'm going to do I'm just going to pop that to one side and then I'm going to bring those bats in. I'm only going to use two, I'm not going to use three. The only reason there's three there is because I got two out and then I lost one. I couldn't find it, so then I got a third one out. And then just as I found the third one, I found the second one, the one that I'd lost originally. I know. So that's the only reason why there's three. So this is black gesso, again indigo blue black gesso. And I'm just going to hold the MDF down with the pokey tool. Give that a nice black coat. There you go. Did a little, 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 no, not really. Spin that round, or just hold it down with the point, spam something down. There you go. First coat, some nice black bats. So, if I just move that out of the way, move that out of the way, and then bring that back in. 
that will have pretty much started to dry now. I'm just going to go over a little bit around the edge. I don't want to get rid of all the black. When it was laser cut, obviously the outside is charred a little bit. But I don't want to get rid of all of it because, you know, it is a Halloween journal when all said and done. So a little bit of black is allowed. And then I'm just going to get the heat gun on it. Should dry pretty quick. Okay, all that is dry. Now you can see the shine on there, but it's not as shiny as I want it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a quick tidy up, put this paint away. All right, just pop those somewhere safe where they're not going to get in the way because otherwise I just know I'm going to end up putting my elbows in them. I have a quick clean up here and then I'll be right back. Okay, just to make sure that we do get a real decent shine on that, I'm going to give it a clear coat of embossing powder. So this is my VersaFine watermark stamp pad. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing, making sure that it's had a good coating. Okay, and then do the same for the bats. <laughs> and you can tell if they've had a good coat in because they're all got the um, the glue or the glycerin on them. And we'll just come in with a sheet of scrap. scratch paper and then we'll give it all a good coat there we go just go over the whole thing doesn't matter if I tip out the entire pot I can always pop it back in again At least I know there's plenty of the powder actually on there. And lift it up, tap off the excess. Tap off the excess. Here we go. Embossing powder is not my most favourite of mediums. I do use it occasionally, but I don't make a habit out of it. There we go. Okay, let's bring that heat gun. Let's do the bat first, or the bats first. Okay, those are the bats. It is kind of a magical process watching the embossing powder melt, or the lithographic powder, whichever you want to call it. Okay, let's have a go at the web now. Okay, just need to leave that to cool down for a second or two. Okay, so they've pretty much cooled down here. You can see the shine and the gloss that's on those bats now. There, look at that. Isn't that just lovely? See, some things I don't mind having a shine on. And that is the spider's web, as you can see. Look at that. Look at the shine and the sheen on there. Now, the beauty about embossing powder is 
is that um, you can add more coats if you want to and it just melds and blends into the previous coat so if you've missed a little bit not a problem just re-glue re-sprinkle and then go back over the top again so while I'm waiting for my signatures to finish gluing in and drying I may just give this another coat of the clear but I'll see you when I'm ready to stick it onto the front. Back in a mo. So the book is now completely dry. So all the signatures and the tray, the pockets are done, all the signatures are nicely stitched in. You've got your headers, the footers, you've got your placeholder ribbon so you don't lose your place. So all I have to do now is just to stick the final embellishment onto the front. So the bats are all done, as you can see. So they look good enough to eat, practically. And then the shine on the spider's web, as you can see, just fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just turn it over, put just the smallest amount of glossy accents just on the back just where it counts just to kind of hold it in place I've probably only got about one chance of getting this in the right position. I think that's got a blob just about everywhere. Can't see anywhere that I've missed really. Maybe a couple just there. Okay, so let's oh, missed one there. Okay, so let's flip this bad boy over. And I've already marked an arrow on it so I know exactly which way up it needs to go. And then drop it down. And I've just got a second or two just to maneuver it in place. There we go. And then I need something just a little bit heavy just to hold it. Yeah that will work just in a second so just pop that down there. There we go maybe something a little bit heavier. There we go. So that will grab. And then I'm going to add some glossy accents onto the back of the bats. I'm not exactly sure where these are going to touch on the web, so I'm going right the way across. So I've added it quite a bit, and then I'm going to drop that one down there. And then with this one, going to drop that one down just there. Place that there to keep it level and they should sit and stick within about half an hour or so. So I'll give those a little bit time to go off and then I'll be back. And there we have it, one mini book of shadows. So you can see the shine on the bats and on the spider's web, complementary to um, the book corners, the protection on the corners, and then on the inside, you have your tarot 
journaling cards with your invisible pockets and then you've got your um, signatures and your pages to write in or I've got my pages to write in because I did actually make this for me so there's my mini book of shadows kind of cute Halloween-y um, little notebook perfect for slinging in a bag and taking notes and journaling in when I'm on the go so there you go that's my little mini book of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed watching me put that together. It's taken me from start to finish um, the filming of this video around about five hours because of the drying time and the time I've had to wait <laughs> for things to um, just kind of be dry enough to work with. So I hope if you have a go at making one for you, you can do it in quicker time than I did. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again tomorrow for another seven days of Halloween project. Bye for now.